we have uh, Livio Kirgu, he's from the uh, OpenSIPS team, he's a core developer for the project, and uh, he will uh, present about event interface, what's uh, event interface, uh, what can be used for, a couple of user yes. scenarios. So, please, go ahead. Thank you, Bogdan. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Livio Kirku. And uh, to those of you who uh, haven't uh, seen me at the past Amsterdam Summit, uh, I've been an OpenSIP developer for uh, four years now. Um, I'm basically, <coughs> I don't specialize in like uh, certain places of OpenSIP. It's, it's basically kind of an all over the place job where uh, <coughs> we just uh, take care of problems uh, and help, uh, help the project move further as, uh, as we go along. You can reach me out on uh, Twitter, uh, GitHub, or uh, at any time uh, on uh, the RC chat. And today we're going to, I'm going to um, talk a bit about, uh, I mean, not just a bit, but uh, anything related to the OpenSIPS event interface. And um, just to, uh, as, a, as a nice breaker, how many of you have uh, firstly heard of the event interface, like, if, could, if you could. Okay, and uh, among you, how many do you actually use it? <laughs> Thank you, Rizvan. <laughs> so, uh, it's good because um, um, th there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of good things that uh, come out of it because um, we, we basically, so there was a need for uh, something beyond just logging, because there are uh, certain events uh, that go on on your uh, SIP server that you just uh, you don't have the hooks for them. For example, uh, certain state changes in your RTP relay nodes or um, dispatching destinations. Uh, do you get any sort of feedback for when they, uh, you know, uh, flip flop on or on or off? Or uh, maybe you have some bottlenecks in your server, and um, on all sort of levels, uh, either like transport uh, related, or uh, as you can see, it's DNS or uh, database queries. And uh, last but not least, the also famous out of memory problems that uh, like basically half of the mailing list traffic is about. Um, so uh, you, you kind of need like a centralized uh, mechanism to, to uh, generate all these events. Uh, so that's how well, we came up with the event interface. Um, it, it actually started like uh, quite a while back ago, uh, back when, uh, like six years ago, I think, was the, the first version of it. Um, actually, it was, uh, fun fact, uh, it was Rezvan's uh, license uh, college <laughs> project. Uh, so. Um, uh, and uh, the way it started out, it, uh, it only had the UDP uh, transport module that you can basically write an app to, to process the events. And as OpenSIF moved, moved forward, um, we added uh, more and more backends uh, which could uh, eat up all those events. For example, uh, the RabbitMQ broker uh, and uh, uh, HTTP-based XML requests um, and in the upcoming 2.2, we um, felt there was a need for both uh, scaling out uh, so, uh, and failover with these events. Because, uh, for example, what if the RabbitMQ goes down? You, you don't want to lose CDRs or um, whatnot. Um, so basically, the event interface um, it's quite simple to, to grasp. It's built right into the binary. Uh, it, it, there's uh, no additional, I don't know, compile tags or anything. Uh, you just subscribe your events and uh, send them to, to the backend. I'll show you uh, in quite a bit. These are, um, it, uh, it comprises of a multitude of events. Um, Related to accounting, for example, uh, CDRs and uh, missed calls, or uh, problems related to MySQL connections, or uh, what's 
you know, I think I already mentioned these uh, presence and fraud detection, I guess, here that we haven't talked about. So, um, and uh, anyway, uh, it's quite easy for us to add these hooks. So you might as well just open up a pull, uh, feature request on GitHub and we'll most likely take care of it uh, as soon as possible if you feel there is something that uh, you cannot log or, uh, or monitor because uh, that's basically half of what the event interface helps you with. Um, so th this is kind of a basic uh, diagram of how things go. OpenSIPS generates the events and um, now, sorry, from 2.2, you can basically uh, just ship them to the like, uh, log file. This is the guaranteed uh, method. Or you can uh, send them to, uh, like I said before, like a message broker or, I don't know, web server or um, the UDP-based app you might want to write. Um, uh, using it in the script is quite trivial. Um, you basically, for each backend you want to, you're interested in uh, implementing, uh, you just load its module, um, and most likely the, that's all you're going to be doing. It's like uh, at most a couple of parameters you need to change. Uh, and at runtime, um, most of these are transparently handled, but you can also, um, if should you need like additional uh, I don't know, logging or hooks into the script, you can use the uh, wrap, the event wrap, where uh, you have like a duplicate uh, uh, version of the event. Um, and uh, well, I'm going to continue with um, a workshop where um, we're going to see uh, all these uh, kind of uh, hooks into the, the platform where uh, we might want to add this type of uh, event interface based monitoring. For example, um, starting right from the from the left side, from the user agent uh, client, we may want to rate limit some, some gateways, right? So we need events for that. Then moving forward, um, what happens on the DB side? Uh, is, are my queries slow? Or how often does that happen? Or uh, does the connection go down? Again, th these are problems. I, I guess if that happens, you, you get like uh, fault errors through the log, but uh, anyway, it's, it's a useful event to have. Uh, also, the accounting events, we're going to be doing some of those. And um, last but not least, internal events. For example, like I said, memory and uh, all kinds of bottlenecks that might uh, go on and uh, be undetected unless you plug in the, uh, the proper events. <coughs> Just one second. These are basically the modules that are required. Uh, we're going to to be dispatching in, uh, events in parallel. We're basically forking them to both RabbitMQ server and uh, the ensured way, like just dump it into a file, just to be sure. So for this, we're going to be using, uh, of course, the event RabbitMQ and the flat store. And um, the new modules, I, I mean, I guess the flat store is new as well. Um, the virtual, which is kind of a wrapper on, on top of these, so uh, you'll see in, in a bit. Uh, also, the, we're going to need the pipe module for the rate limiting uh, part. And uh, yeah, this is how the, uh, the initial, uh, this is the startup route. Uh, okay. And uh, here we see how we subscribe to our backends to each of these events. So let's take them one by one. Uh, the first three are related to core thresholds. If we run out of shared memory or yeah, one of the processes runs out of private, 
And uh, this one, this is a good one, the core threshold. Uh, it basically uh, refers to any threshold that may be uh, exceeded. Uh, but, but again, I guess you'd have to set that as well. I forgot. So if you, here, you have to look in the web, I open up the website a bit. So, the best way to, to see them is in the global parameters and just search for threshold. And we see the, we, we kind of have to set each one of these in order to have the event interface detect the threshold itself because by default uh, they're unfortunately disabled, right? Default value is disabled. So um, in this script, uh, we're only going to be monitoring the uh, query threshold times. So if it uh, exceeds, uh, what is that, half seconds, it will uh, pop up some warnings. Um, next, uh, interesting events are the connection, and we're going to be at some point playing with that as well. Uh, of course, dialog events, whenever uh, like, I guess this might be of interest. Uh, the blocking events, if uh, some sort of fraud might be going on or uh, denial of service then. Um, and uh, this is the subscriber, a bunch of subscriber events, and accounting. Um, regarding the slow query, I made up like a fun route that uh, makes it so that one in 20 queries is uh, kind of a dumb one. So uh, it will take like one second. So we're, we're going to, that's how we simulate the occasional uh, slow query or problem with the DB. So uh, let's fire up the user agents. I'm uh, going to be starting a server. Yeah. I've been using CP forever. Like it's, it's kind of a Swiss knife on CP. Uh, and I'm going to be starting. Oh, let's first start with my I guess that would help. Okay. And uh, I'm going to have the client listen and send to local post. And let's start with one CPS and one max call. Um, all right. So, if we take a look at the, the second part of the registration of the event, uh, this is the, uh, the way the virtual, the new virtual module uh, is used. So basically, we're telling it to send to fork events in parallel to the two backups, right? The RabbitMQ, which uh, I already have, uh, I have already started, I guess. And uh, to some some logging file, and I'm not sure how I will get everything to fit, but should let's tail them. And um, for the RabbitMQ, I wrote. Uh, I'm going to show this. Like a quick consumer in Python, it's uh, you basically just uh, declare the queue and just read everything off it. And uh, I'm going to show them both in parallel as we go along. Okay. Seems there were some uh, events that weren't consumed before. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, let's, uh, so as I said, let's maintain like a steady flow of, uh, I don't know, something like <coughs> say 10 calls per second. And we can already see the, some dialogue events and uh, 
the calls are like 10, ten second duration, so CDRs are already coming to, uh, they're already coming in. And uh, I guess this is uh, what we'd call a normal set of function, right? Everything uh, looks okay and everything is forked to, the, to both backends. Um, but what if we start I guess there is that occasional slow period. That's uh, that kind of a here and there uh, starts to trigger, and uh, and the event is probably in there as well. Then I guess we, for the sake of it, core threshold. So. It's, uh, good monitoring thing to have and uh, I'm going to simulate like um, DV problems where uh, it goes down or uh, we lose connectivity like a network partitioning problem that uh, also often happens and uh, I'm just going to block it in with the tables so uh, let's just block the 3306 port. And see what OpenSwitch does. Oh, nice. So, right, everything kind of got stuck, and uh, it, it's probably starting to time out all the transactions. And uh, in the meantime, the event interface uh, is already. Uh, learning us about uh, mod. what's it called? Uh, I'm so bad with the uh, event name. Uh, I think it's the MySQL connection event. Uh, and uh, telling us the connection went down. Uh, so this is uh, like an optimal time to take uh, action in, in, in the platform, you know, like uh, failover or, or uh, it's a, it's a great hook for uh, for availability. So uh, if we resume a normal operation, let's delete the rules. Um, let's delete after uh, one. Right. Uh, the the MySQL connection event uh, it, it got dug up in there. Uh, in instructions that the connection is back online and uh, everything is. Uh, Safely resuming. Um, also, since we plugged in the bike module, uh, let's see what happens when we bump up the calls per second and uh, see how the event interface again uh, helps us there. That's uh, from uh, 10. I, I guess let's. Bump it to like 130, and uh, I don't know, it should right white block. Uh, again, uh, useful tool to have, and uh, good usage of uh, the web interface. Basically, uh, using it to the fullest. So. Uh, yeah, the, the pipe will not block it after a certain period of time. That's, uh, I guess I haven't talked about that too much. I have this bad habit of opening up like a pile of puzzles. Uh, so it's the remove latency. So the IP gets unblocked after uh, 60 seconds. Um, and uh, <coughs> right, I guess uh, th that's all there is to it. It's a um, it's a quite a handy tool. It's a, a very generic way of uh, uh, making uh, everybody happy because uh, there are so many backends and uh, so many events all centralized into a, into the, like one big engine.
Yeah. I'm going to go on with like a little bit of uh, some technical details on um, how it works, because you might have some questions like, uh, okay, how does the uh, how does it scale? Like, uh, how does it impact performance? Uh, the server, the fact that I'm generating all these events and uh, and stuff. So uh, basically, uh, each SIP worker. Uh, generates its event, so there is no like uh, bottlenecks or, or anything going on. So you can uh, essentially scale to the number of CPUs you have. So uh, that, that's a, a problem which is solved right out of the box. Um, and on the receive part, uh, and this is what we've uh, worked in the in the two point release, we took care of uh, scaling uh, with like multiple <coughs> queues and servers with the event virtual uh, because it can, um, I guess, uh, I, I, I made a typo here, but, like not a typo, because uh, the idea is not parallel. I guess I can't edit right now. Uh, but round robin, so you, you basically just uh, distribute your events to to all your your backends that you want to scale out with, so um, not parallel but round robin. Um, that's how uh, we scale with uh, on the on the other side. And also uh, the same event virtual module helps us, uh, like I've shown you uh, in the script, how we implement it by uh, duplicating the events just in case our uh, main backend, which is featured over there with number one goes down or has some issues and we really want to keep track of, of the CDRs or uh, critical events of the platform uh, by using the failover mode. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's basically it. Uh, for more uh, info to the relative right event interface, uh, there's a file of tutorials on, uh, on the website. and. Uh, also, the module documentation related to each of the transfer modules are, is quite useful there and uh, contains a lot of useful, uh, uh, like essential things you need to take care of, and then you're just good to go. Uh, I'm not sure how, how quick everything was, but if, feel free to ask any sort of questions you might have. Sure. And if each worker process generates its own events, the worker process also responsible for sending out the events and waiting for the response, or is that handled by a different process? Uh, no, uh, exactly. So that uh, specific process also uh, has to do the TCP or whatever the uh, library RabbitMQ sending okay. uh, part. So in the case that the uh, RabbitMQ connection was yeah. has gone away, uh, what was the situation? Um, uh, I'm not sh uh, sure I know all the parameters, but I guess there is some sort of uh, timeout you can uh, plug in there just so. Um, I, I guess it won't be able to connect anyway, so it, it will rather quickly return back with an error. Oh, okay, so you but, yeah. won't try for <coughs> No, no. Maybe Rosman can tell us more about this since he wrote it. So, so how does that work? The um, ongoing attempts? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so it's basically the library timeout. So you can exactly. configure timeout. You can also configure it to do an uh, HA pinging, a uh, heartbeat pinging, uh, just to make sure both server and are up. Uh, okay, any more questions? Sure. Could you explain a little bit more to? People who don't know very much like me. Sure. Um, what the relationship is between the events and the accounting model. And if there are advantages in using this type of system rather than using the accounting model to log, for example, special events. So, so just to have the events and uh, write to the database from the apps over over that place. Um, it's a it's a good question, I guess. Mm. I would say just that the accounting module is so flexible 
and you can uh, control to, to a very fine degree what types of columns you want to have in the CDR. Um, that more or less, it, they're just alternatives. So uh, performance-wise now, I guess this is a good, uh, and, and so basically we've uh, concluded that you can write any sort of functionality and obtain uh, with any of them, right? So performance-wise, I guess that there's some uh, little bit of uh, good to each because you don't want to, I'm talking about now from an architectural point of view, because you don't want to build up all your logic into a single uh, app, uh, like OpenSIPS. So it, this uh, idea would have the advantage of decoupling, uh, having uh, OpenSIPS just do something, uh, you know, rather lightweight, uh, just send some event to, to a queue that probably uh, quickly returns back, and then you can resume processing and uh, uh, have your CDRs with them in this decoupled way. Uh, so that this is good for scalability, and uh, moving it in OpenSafe is good for speed. So it's a lot quicker. So it's a trade-off. Uh, which one you, you pick? Um, I guess I... Uh, was I pretty clear enough, or...? If you wanted to do something that scaled really well. Right. If you wanted to do some, I, I, I would say the, the event would scale better. The, the, the queue, since you have like, uh, so many scenarios with RabbitMQ, you can uh, distribute. You can uh, uh, scale quite right well. Can I ask also, you uh, there's another catch to it, since uh, you can now insert the uh, the the DB do the inserts uh, asynchronously, right? So, so uh, can I can I ask for here? So the idea is that you can decouple the uh, CDRs and somehow balance the way CDRs are um, are uh, propagated to the uh, backend uh, at the end. Uh, you you could, for example, use it for high availability. Um, for high availability purposes, for example, having multiple or everything few uh, servers that all get the CDRs or do some sort of round robin uh, will ensure you'll never lose them because well, CDRs are very important. It's the way you get your customer skills. Okay, is that the other uh, the other uh, alternative is to do either do it on the disk, so you depend on one disk. Uh, or, well, if you have a NFS or something like that, a metro file system, that would work too. Or have have them all in a central DB, which is, again, it's some sort of bottleneck. There are uh, other solutions, but this is one of them. It's simpler. All you have to do is configure a Replicant Cube server and send all the events over there. So you don't have to spend time inserting them in a DB or writing them on the disk. Does this answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions? Well, great then. Uh, uh, we now have a break of 30 minutes, I think. Is it longer? Okay.